Pac-12 North preview. I like the Pac-12 this year. It's it's uh, interesting, if nothing else. I was, it, that's, I, that's why I'm saying I like them. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. I don't think it's great, but it is going to be fun to watch. No, it's it's not great by any means. But chaos is but oftentimes yes, fun. Chaos is always great. Let's uh, let's jump in. We're doing alphabetical order. California first. Five and seven in 2017. They're over under this year is six and a half, but they are plus 100 to go over six and a half. So it Vegas prefers that they go under. Under. Correct. Right. So they've got 10 starters back on offense, seven starters back on defense. Justin Wilcox's second year has a ton of experience back. Offensive coordinator is former Eastern Washington head coach Bo Baldwin. He went 85 and 32 at Eastern Washington, had six playoff wins. Uh, or six playoff appearances. Uh, Ross Bowers is back at quarterback along with everyone except for one wide receiver, so they've got, like, the whole plethora of guys are back. The defense improved from giving up 42.6 points per game and 6.71 yards per play in 2016 under Sonny Dykes to 28.4 points per game last year and only 5.8 yards per play. They should be even better under Justin Wilcox in 2018. I like this team a lot. I got them going over the six and a half. I got them at seven and five this year. I got them five and seven, exact opposite, maybe. Okay, I mean that makes sense because like they play at BYU, they play North Carolina to start the season. North Carolina, uh, North Carolina is going to have uh, injury or not injuries, suspension suspensions. Problems. Thank you. Um, you know, I've got them beating Oregon I after have a no bye week. Idea. All right, so we're going to preface this by saying. This is the conference I feel least confident about. We well, it's because about this anything off. could happen. There's so many new faces. There's I, so much new some stuff. Some of these picks, I could literally be four games off in, in college football. That's massive. Yeah. like I And it wouldn't shock me if I'm four games wrong on these teams. I like Justin Wilcox. He is, like, he teaches defense. He he does the thing. You know how we do. You go to the, the website, winningcureseverything.com, and go to the store. There is a shirt up there that is centered around run the ball, stop the run. He understands that. Like, California is one of the only Pac-12 teams that really gets it, along with Stanford, Stanford and whatnot, but like, it general. takes a while to build into what Stanford has become. But, like, I think that he knows what he's doing. And, you know, I've got him losing, like, at Washington State, at USC. I've got him losing to Stanford. To um, the big boys. Yeah. Games but I, but I've also got him beating Oregon, and I think very highly of Oregon this year. Yeah. So... You know, seven and five, a bowl appearance. Like, I like them. Sure. I like them a lot. So you got them, what, five and seven? I got them five and seven. Let's move on to Oregon. 2017, they went seven and five. They're over under this year is eight and a half, and they are minus 150 to go over the eight Ooh. and a half. Okay. Seven starters back on offense, seven starters back on defense. Willie Taggart, gone after less than a full year. Came in, got, got like folks suspended. Yeah, and then got everybody, like, excited because, you know, Justin Herbert was awesome and, like, da, 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 you know, everything was rolling right. He brought in Jim Levitt with him. Like, everything looked good until, you know, Justin Herbert got hurt. And But even still, 7-5, and five, you feel like, okay, we're moving towards something. This is good. Right. And then deuces. I'm going back to the, uh, to the other coast, going back to Florida State. So Mario Cristobal, however, was on staff with him, and – he was an offensive line coach for Nick Saban for years and years. He was a head coach at FIU for a long time. Took them to like their first bowl game and whatnot. Uh, the dude knows how to coach. And he somehow convinced Jim Levitt to stay. And that's a big deal for this defense. Uh, look, Justin Herbert is a beast. He was leading the country, or the team was, at 49.6 points per game when he broke his collarbone against uh, Cal. Uh, the defense improved from 41.4 points per game and 6.41 yards per play in 2016 to 29 points a game and 5.07 yards per play in 2017. And they've got seven starters back and experience across the board. Look, the schedule sets up insanely nice for a run at a division title this year. They could surprise some people because I think Justin Herbert is that good. He is He's 6'6", put on a ton of muscle, just in the off season, he's like 240, 245 pounds, something like that. This dude is a giant, and he can move, and it's it's scary. I've got him at nine and three. I got him uh, five and three in the conference. So I got him eight and four. We're really close. I like this team, but I don't know. Man, I don't know a lot about them. I mean, they're they're kind of unpredictable. 
I think everybody in this conference is. No, other well, than Oregon State, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a couple. Of, there's a couple <laughs> of them. I, I, I feel very, very clear about how bad I think they're going to be. That makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, it's, you've got them what, eight and four. I got them eight and four, and I don't. I don't have anything else to add because I just I don't know. Don't, them. I don't know. I. I mean, they, they, like obviously, we know the guys that are coming back, but like I like that there's consistency in the coaching staff, even though he lost the head coach. That's kind of weird to yeah. say and is not normal. And we're gonna find out how much Willie Taggart was involved in stuff. Maybe do you know that Willie Taggart was the? Well, we'll get to somebody else. That Willie Taggart is the number two uh, winningest coach against the spread in all of college football. I didn't realize that. But what's the sample size? Like, he's only been a head coach, like, four years? No, he's it's because he was at Western Kentucky, and then he oh, went to South okay, Florida. That, no, no, no. I he, knew it was at South Florida before here. Yeah. I didn't remember Western Kentucky. But, like, it just – and I'm not talking about, like, just winning percentage, anything. Like, I'm talking against the spread. I know he was a coordinator, and he worked under, like, Jim Harbaugh and all this other stuff. Yeah. So, I, I didn't know how long he had been. Uh, he was at Western Kentucky for, what, three, four years? Okay, so he's And then about, he was at South years. Florida for, well, like, three years. Western, See, a lot of that's a little strange because when you're at Western Kentucky, you can cover every number because the teams in your conference, you just smoke. And then you play the non-conference teams pretty close. Yeah. And the numbers are like 30-point spreads. Yeah. No, you're right. So, yeah, for anybody that wants to follow Willie Taggart, might might want to bet on Florida State this year. I don't know. But I, I, would, I would bet on Oregon. It's a little bit different this year. Uh, Oregon State, 2017, 1-11. Uh, their over under this year is two and a half, and they are plus one forty to do that. <laughs> this is this is not one of the teams that I'm worried about being four games wrong on. Yeah, I, it's I not agree. mathematically possible for me to go four games. Back. Um, they got seven starters back on offense, five on defense. It, look, I, I gotta I gotta talk about this. Former coach Gary Anderson told everybody when he took the job that if he could not win, he would quit and take no money. This dude went seven and twenty three. He left after a one and five start last year, and straight took no money. He didn't want a pay. He didn't want to get paid to leave or anything like. That. He just said, "I couldn't get it done. Y'all deserve better. I'm sorry." And he's like, he's coaching with uh, with Utah now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he went um, to Utah. But uh, but yeah, Jonathan Smith, former Oregon State uh, quarterback, he was Washington's offensive coordinator for the last five years. He is the new head coach. I don't think that there's a lot that he can work with. There's 45 lettermen returning, but this is easily the least talented team in the conference. They open at Ohio State. They host Southern Utah, and then they play uh, at Nevada. I've got them at one and eleven again. I got them. I got them two and ten, just because I think they find a, a W somewhere. I mean, they got close multiple times last year. There's a there's another team that I have two and ten. I've got them winning one conference game in this division or in this conference. In the conference, this okay. Division. All right, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. All right, we'll jump off Oregon State. We, we've already spent too much time on them. Stanford, 2017, they went 9-4. and four. They were 9-5 and five after the bowl game, but whatever. Uh, their over-under this year is 8.5. They are minus 120. They got eight starters back on offense, six on defense. They lost to USC in their second game last year, then lost to him again in the Pac-12 title game. David Shaw, in his eighth year, 73-22 and 22 overall. He is number one against the spread. 58, 36, and 1 against the number. That is bonkers to me because I never would have seen that. Uh, K.J. Costello is back at quarterback. He started the final six games. They only went 3-3 three and three in those games, but he looked great. They, they was, it was against tough competition. Bryce Love returns. He will, uh, he will do more in the offense this year, which I don't know how you could possibly do that. The defense uh, returns six guys and at least one returning starter in every unit. Defense is talented. They are hybrid. They should be fine again, just like usual. But the road schedule this year, holy mackerel. Have you seen it? Like, obviously, you've seen it. But yep. at Oregon, at Notre Dame, at Arizona State, at Washington, at Cal, at UCLA. Yeah, this is a really tough schedule. This is ridiculous. But I still like them a lot. I got them 9-3. Okay. I, this, I know, I've, I know I've, we've gotten into it on other podcasts about David Shaw. And I was, like, I don't put him up there with the Nick Sabans and the – Chip Kelly. I'm not and saying he's Nick Saban. But I'm not like we did a ranking of top ten coaches. He doesn't belong in the top ten coaches in the country. In that, my that opinion, that is just wrong. You're talking that about is wrong. You're talking about that's the top ten percent of coaching. There's 130. There's 130 schools. head coaches. Yeah, I think he belongs in the top ten. I don't. I got him seven and five, and this is not. Hey, I think that schedule is brutal. 
Yes, that schedule is absolutely brutal. I got him. I just think that schedule is going to take a toll. They got and USC at home. Of, I don't know how. Yeah, but they don't have a great home to, home crowd at all. Oh no! I mean, that but it's better than playing at USC. Well, well, yeah, okay. It is so better especially than like the USC game. deal. Like they're playing USC at home on September eighth. They hadn't even started school by then. Like yeah, the students know, won't yeah. even be no, there. Nobody will be there. That that will be the quietest conference game they'll play all year. Oh, absolutely. Which is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Do you think USC fans travel up north and just take over all those seats? Absolutely not. They're not leaving LA. Are you kidding me? USC fans don't leave LA. For the cold. That's for the, it. For the for the for the cold of of of, of northern northern yeah Palo Alto. Palo Alto. Like no, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. And Palo Alto, by the way, is not that cold. It, well, obviously, in September it's, it's not going to be. In, now in San Francisco, like inside the Bay, yeah, it is it's chilly. But uh, Palo Alto, man, it can get a little warm uh, in, in early September. It's still probably going to be pretty warm compared to L.A. Compared to L.A. for sure. Um, Washington. Washington, yeah, damn, eleven and one last year. No, sorry, ten and two last year. Uh, they were eleven and one in twenty sixteen. Year, right? year before when they made the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, their over under is ten and a half, but they are plus one fifty five to do that. Uh, basically, what you're saying is you have to beat Auburn in order to, to go, go over. over. That's that's the kicker. Yeah. Um, look, seven starters back on offense, nine on defense. Uh, if not for a thirteen to seven loss at Arizona State, they might have made the playoffs for the second straight year last year. Jake Browning's fourth season. He is a senior now, and of course they have Jacob Eason that is sitting out this year. Um, he will be the starting quarterback next year, at least we believe. Um, where are we? We're at Washington. Oh, no, no, no. Running back Miles Gaskin. This dude's incredible. Yes. Absolutely incredible. They've got four out of five offensive linemen back. Wide receiver Chico McClatcher is back from injury. Uh, are they big enough in the trenches to be able to handle teams like Auburn and Stanford, etc.? The Auburn game, to me, determines a playoff chance. Like, you have to win that to change the oh, perception. Compl- oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not going to disagree with that. So, I have them 11-1. and one. I do have them beating Auburn, but I've got them losing at Oregon right in the middle of the schedule. Because they this team goes, let's see, 10 weeks without a bye. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a long season for them. Yeah. And and they've got Stanford right before that bye too. So that's I mean, that's a well, nine other, game stretch. Other things that you need to pay attention to. Like they've got Stanford at home, but you know, they play at Oregon right after they play at UCLA and like Chip Kelly like I don't expect much from him this year, but like I mean, you never know what to expect with him. Uh Arizona State they've got at home, but they they play at Utah the week before that. At Utah is always crazy for them. Utah has played them within a one possession game the last two years when they've been really good. U- Utah's that team, though, right? Yeah, like Utah's we, that team. We're, we're going like to get to them in the next segment. Yeah, but Utah's Utah's that kind of team. Yeah, they just they they you don't want to play them. And then they finished the, the season on the road in the rivalry game, the Apple Cup. Yeah, that's yeah. not going to be a gimme, man. That's those two teams don't like each other. I got them ten and two, and I got them book in with Wells. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Lost to Auburn, lost at Washington State. Let's move on to Washington State then. They went 9-3 and three last year. Their over-under this year is 6.5, but they are plus 160 to go six and, or to go over 6.5. Four starters back on offense, seven back on defense. The biggest question is, how does Mike Leach's team respond after the tragic death of quarterback Tyler Helinski? They also lost Alex Greenwich, the defensive coordinator to Ohio State. Former Minnesota head coach Tracy Clays does come in and take over the defense, but... What is he going to run, right? I, I don't know what he's going to do. Uh, East Carolina graduate transfer quarterback Gardner Minshew looks to be the starting quarterback now. The offensive line loses three starters. They only have two wide receivers back. Look, they've gone twenty six and thirteen the last two se- or last three seasons. Can they keep that up? I don't think so. This year, this feels like a rebuild, like a reset everything year. I've got them at six and six. I got them three and six in the conference. Got them nine and three. I like this team, but you know my infatuation with with Leach. I just I love the man. I think he's insanely good. I also think that is their ceiling. Yeah, like that is like the best they're gonna be. I understand I, that. I accept it. I know it. Like they play at USC, at Stanford, and they host Washington. That's the the three biggies. They play at Wyoming, which doesn't look like it's going to be a gimme. Uh, they host Utah, they host Oregon, they host Cal, 
They play at Colorado, which I don't even know what to make. And when Arizona yeah. comes, I mean, it's like it's a tough schedule. All of these are tough schedules I mean, like because said, we, we don't know what to think of any of them. Started this by saying this is the one conference I don't know anything about. Yeah. No, if I know. they finish five and seven, it will not surprise me. I was four games off on this team. <laughs> it just won't. It just won't. I'm, I mean, I didn't no, have you're, no clue. you're right. You're right. So, all right. Well, go that with is my gut, going with my instinct. That is the Pac-12 North. Going with Wazoo. We're going to move on to the Pac-12 South.